Welcome to HSC Economics Made Easy. This video marks the beginning of the next economic issue of topic three, unemployment. Today we'll be introducing key terminology related to this concept, as well as learning to use the relevant formulas. First off, what is the definition of unemployment? Unemployment is defined as the situation where individuals are actively seeking work but can't find it. Note that they have to be actively seeking. If they're not regularly checking ads, applying for jobs, or registered with a job agency, then they're not actively seeking, and therefore they don't fall under this definition of unemployment. Let's go through a few more keywords. In our general population, we have people under 15 years old. People who are over 15 are categorized as the working age population. Within this working age population, there's a proportion of people who are not working or seeking work, which are called hidden unemployed. But for those that are, we call them the labor force. Within the labor force, people are either employed or are actively seeking, but can't find a job. This is the unemployed. So I hope that helps you distinguish between those categories. Next, let's go through some mathematical definitions. Following from our definition of the labor force, the labor force participation rate is the size of the labor force as a proportion of the working age population, shown as percentage. Keep in mind that the size of the labor force includes the unemployed and employed, both full-time and part-time. And the unemployment rate is the number of unemployed as a proportion of the labor force, also shown as a percentage. Let's see if we can apply our understanding of these terms and formulas to some past HSC questions. With 2017's HSC question 15, we'll get to practice some calculations. First, let's figure out the size of the labor force, because we need that for both the unemployment rate and the participation rate. Labor force is calculated by adding employed with unemployed for each year. And here we are. Next, let's calculate the unemployment rate for each year. This is done by dividing the unemployment rate by the labor force of each year and expressing them as a percentage. So here we are. So with years two and four being 40%, the answer is either B or D. Now let's look at the participation rate. This is calculated by dividing the labor force by the working age population. By doing this, we'll find that years two and three both have a participation rate of 62.5%. With this, we know that the answer is B. In coming videos, I'll be focusing a lot more heavily on unemployment because that's where the curriculum heads. But one concern that I've had over the years is that students can get so caught up with studying unemployment, they start to neglect the labor force and the participation rate. And then they get caught off guard when questions on these concepts come up in exam papers. So here are a few more past HSC questions to give you a bit more practice. In 2012's question six, we're asked to calculate the change in size of the labor force between years one and two. The definition of the labor force is unemployed plus employed. By this definition, we also include the part-time employed. By adding this up, we'll find that the labor force was 900,000 in year one and 960,000 in year two. This means that it's grown by 60,000 and the answer is C. Let's also look at 2019's question five. It's got no calculation, but it tests your understanding of the participation rate formula. Which of these scenarios would cause a rise in the participation rate? A. More people are retiring early. This would cause less of the population above 15 to be working or looking for work, therefore lowering the participation rate. A is wrong. B. More parents are returning to the workforce. This would mean that people who were previously not working or looking for jobs are now back in the labor force, causing the rate to increase. B is the correct answer. But just to make sure, let's play out the other scenarios. It's a good habit to look at all the options even when you think you're right. C says more unemployed people are joining the defense force. They're shifting from unemployed to employed. This would make no difference to the participation rate because both employed and unemployed are counted anyway. C is wrong. D, more students are choosing to continue with further education. We could assume that this means that they're less likely to be working or looking for a job. So therefore, the labor force would either see no growth or even shrink. This confirms that our answer is B. To wrap up this video, I wanna look at this short answer question that explores the relationship between the participation rate and the unemployment rate. 2015's question 23 asks how hidden unemployment can influence the unemployment rate. Let's assume that this increase in hidden unemployment is made up of unemployed no longer actively seeking work. This means that they do not fall under the official definition of unemployment and the unemployment rate would therefore fall as a result of this. This should suffice for two marks worth of detail. I hope my explanations and examples have made it easy for you to get started in the unemployment topic. 
My next video will be a continuation of the series and we'll be looking at the types of unemployment and their causes. Make sure you subscribe to the channel as well as follow us on Facebook to make sure you don't miss any future videos. If this video has helped you, please leave a like and comment as well as share the video too. I look forward to continuing to make HSC economics easy for you. See you next time.